Hello everyone, so this video will be looking at uh, the second automatic thresholding uh, method that we, that we will uh, use, which is the uh, Otsu uh, thresholding. And the, um, the principle of the Otsu thresholding is slightly different from the uh, optimal. So the optimal threshold, we were using a, um, an iterative uh, method uh, to get the um, basically the best separation between the two uh, parts of our distributions and we defined the uh, best separation as the um, the point where the, uh, the, the the centroids of the two uh, of the two parts of the distributions uh, where um, where, where uh, so uh, sorry where the threshold was exactly in the middle of the two uh, centroids of the uh, of the distribution so that that's uh, what we define as a good threshold um, with the Otsu algorithm we take a slightly different approach where we uh, really want to look at every possible uh, threshold so we want to look at every possible threshold in the in the uh, in the image um, and what we will uh, look at is we will take each of the of the half distributions, look at the centroid, but also look at the variance in the um, of uh, the um, of the distribution, and we will uh, try to to find the threshold where the um, variance within a class so within one of the part of the uh, one half of the distribution will be as small as possible, meaning that the uh, kind of uh, peak that we have in the in the um, in that part of the distribution is as narrow as possible. So we want to have to, the, the, to have a classes where the uh, the distributions are narrow, where the values are concentrated around one uh, peak. So this will tell us that this will tell us that this kind of uh, an homogeneous. Um, distribution or I mean an homogeneous region uh, of the image where the, the pixels have very similar uh, values and we also want to have um, distributions which are which have a large variance between them so the meaning that they are basically uh, well uh, separated uh, from uh, each other so how do we uh, compute that well the algorithm is that again as I said we look at each possible uh, threshold and for each possible threshold we just like before, cut the distribution in two. Um, and we will uh, compute the um, class probabilities. So for this particular algorithm, we use the uh, norm version of the histogram. So where the sum uh, on all bins is equal to one. So we've just divided everything by the, by the total number of pixels. So that's what we have is uh, not a number of pixels that have a certain value, but the probability that a, a pixel in the image has a certain value. Uh, and so if we just, when we just sum the, um, the, the, the values of this norm histogram, so I can, uh, um, I think there is, is it norm equal true? Just to show that. Yes, uh, so this is uh, what, um, what we will be, the, the, the histogram that we'll be using, where here we have a, a probability of uh, being part of the, this uh, bin. And uh, if we take uh, the sum from zero to 100, for instance, and we say th this is our first, that our first class is every value from z zero to uh, 100. Well, the sum of all of the bins from zero to 100 will be the probability that a given uh, pixel is part of, um, a probability that any pixel is part of the first class. Um, so this is the first thing that we compute, the, the class probabilities for the two, uh, the two classes. Uh, then we compute, just like before, the uh, centroids for each of those class. And then we'll compute the uh, variance um, of each of the two classes, and the the, the next two things that we uh, that we really uh, want to compute, and the things that we will use to determine what the best threshold is, are the intra-class variance, which we uh, define as just the uh, weighted sum of the two uh, class variances. So they are weighted by the probability of um, being part of that class. So meaning that this will be um, very low. If uh, so, th this will be uh, lower if the um, if either the um, 
the probability the class probability uh, is uh, is low or the uh, variance is uh, is low in uh, in at least one of the um, one of the classes so for instance if we um, if we uh, cut the distribution at the point where uh, we have maybe um, we have many pixels uh, in so we have a high probability of being part of a class that has a high variance. So basically, if we take, uh, for instance, uh, a, a threshold here, we'll have a very high variance in this part of the um, of the of the distribution, and we will have a uh, a very high probability of being in that in that part. And so the uh, the total intra-class variance will probably be uh, very high. Uh, we want to to have. Um, something that is uh, as small as possible. So this is something that we want to uh, minimize. We want a small intra-class uh, variance. So we want narrow uh, distributions. And the inter-class variance will be defined as, uh, when we multiply the uh, class um, probabilities by the, um, basically the distance between the two, uh, the two centroids. Um, and this is something that we want to uh, minimize. So we, we, we uh, sorry, that we want to, to maximize. So we want to minimize the intra-class variance and we want to maximize the inter-class variance. So basically the, the distance between the two, um, the two uh, classes. And this, this particular um, metric will also be low if we have a complete class imbalance. So if we have one of the two uh, classes where we just have a very uh, low number of, uh, of pixels, this will tend to decrease uh, the uh, interclass variance as well because we'll have one of the values here that will be uh, fairly uh, low. Um, so the separability we determine we, de we define it as um, the interclass variance divided by the intraclass variance. So uh, if we maximize uh, this separability, that means that uh, we will try to have an interclass variance that is maximized and an intraclass variance that is uh, minimized. So we'll choose the threshold and we'll compute all of that, that for every possible threshold and we'll choose the choose threshold that maximizes uh, lambda. So this is what um, we we do in this uh, in this code. Let's quickly look uh, at that. Uh, first, for we we transform the histogram into the this um, uh, probability uh, histogram, and uh, what we are going to do is we are going to check for for every possible threshold. We are going to record the uh, variance within, variance between, and compute the separability. And how do we do that? Well, uh, we'll do each of the uh, steps in turn. So we look at each um, possible threshold, but actually we'll not look at a uh, threshold of zero or 255 because that doesn't have a lot of sense. That would basically mean we put all of the pixels in the same uh, class. And it will also mean that in the computations here, we'll get some dividing by zero uh, error. So we are, we are just ignoring those possibilities. Um, and we, what we will do is look at the, uh, so for each threshold, the class probabilities. So this is the, the sum of uh, each part of the distribution. We compute the means in the same way as we've done, so the, the centroids in the same way as we've done in the, in the optimal threshold. We compute the variance by the same technique. So it's, we are still using the uh, broadcasting from NumPy to do the operation element by element, and then we sum on the, uh, on the entire um, array. Um, we can compute afterwards the uh, variance uh, intra-class and the variance inter-class, and we get then the separability lambda, which is uh, the inter-class divided by the uh, intra-class, so the variance between divided by the variance within. Uh, we record the variance within and the variance between in two, um, the two, um, sorry, in, the, in these two um, arrays. Uh, we can we can either so so we could um, directly uh, put the um, put the, in the separability uh, array uh, also this uh, this value lambda or if we want we can uh, just uh, compute the separability in one go uh, by using again the numpy broadcasting and just uh, do it uh, for for um, all possible values uh, directly. And the best threshold now will be the, um, the, 
the value that uh, maximizes the separability. So we can use the uh, argmax um, method uh, from NumPy that will uh, give us the index of the element of the array that, uh, that has the uh, maximal value. So that will be the uh, best threshold. Um, so if we uh, do, uh, do that, um, we can apply that now to the, um, to the image, so the same image as uh, we've used in the previous videos. Um, this time I also return here the uh, variance within, variance between and separability so that we can uh, take a look at it. Uh, and we'll first here um, print the histogram, look at the Otsu threshold, um, and we'll plot the results of that, uh, of that tr thresholding. And in the second plot afterwards, we'll plot the uh, variance uh, intraclass, the variance interclass, and the separability to have a look at how they evolve. So let's um, look at that. So again, we have our same histogram here. And we can see that the uh, odds threshold that we found is 115, which was the same that we uh, found with the uh, optimal threshold. So we can have the uh, same result. But what's really uh, interesting here with Otsu is that we get a better idea of um, why we, uh, we have that particular threshold and um, what difference it would make uh, if we change that threshold uh, a bit. So, so uh, how stable basically this, uh, this threshold uh, is. And this is um, so the, the, the variance uh, intra uh, class in blue and the variance between class in red. And you can see that uh, if we have thresholds that are very close to zero or to 255, uh, we have a very high uh, variance uh, intra class. So that means that we have um, at least one of the two classes uh, which, which has a very wide distribution and it contains most of the pixels uh, in the image, so it will have a very high uh, value. When we start getting um, thresholds that are closer to the, to, to the middle and which separate the two uh, main distributions uh, better, then this uh, intra-class variance starts to, uh, t start to go down. And the variance between class um, will have the, the kind of opposite effect where it uh, will start uh, close to, to zero and then it will go up as we separate the two classes uh, better. And we have a, um, a, max a point where this, uh, the ratio between the two is uh, maximum, and this is the uh, 115 point, the, the summit here. And um, what we can see here is that we have basically a whole region here between uh, around 100 and 100 and uh, maybe 35 or something like that, where it's basically stable. Uh, we, we don't have much difference between the, 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 the thresholds uh, here. The, um, both the, the intra-class and the inter-class variances are basically um, at the same point and we have a relatively wide region, uh, so around here, where we can basically uh, split anywhere and we will have uh, relatively similar uh, results. Um, again, we can do the, uh, the same with the uh, etretad image. Uh, that we've used before just to, to, to check uh, what, uh, what it does uh, here. So because here, the, so we have a slightly uh, different shape for the, for the distribution, but we still have our two uh, main uh, peaks. And this time the, um, the Otsu uh, threshold will give us a value of 0 0.435. So this is again very similar to what we had with the, uh, with the optimal threshold. But we can see a slightly different shape. Um, so something that is a bit, uh, a bit narrower here in terms of the, um, of the uh, separability. Um, and this is uh, simply because the, the region between the two distributions here is also uh, smaller. But you can see the, kind of the same uh, kind of, uh, of shape, of general shape, um, wi with uh, so this uh, intra, intra class uh, variance going uh, lower as we uh, better separate the two, uh, the two distributions. And then as soon as we start to incorporate pixels from the two distributions into the same uh, class, uh, the, um, the intra-class uh, variance starts to, to climb up very fast and, um, and the opposite for the uh, variance between the classes. Um, 
And so we can uh, use the same uh, methods as, as before to uh, to kind of clean up uh, everything and get again the same the same result. But this is just another way of getting there uh, automatically, uh, so without having to kind of guess uh, which which would be the the best uh, threshold. Um, so as you can see, these methods kind of all give the 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 the, the, um, the same uh, the same results, but by slightly tweaking uh, what the uh, criteria we use to determine what the best what what me what best threshold uh, means we can uh, get a slightly different uh, uh, results um, so that's it for the um, for the optimal uh, and otsu thresholding and for the um, the histogram thresholding uh, based uh, segmentation and in the next videos we look at other ways to uh, to segment an image where we cannot just rely on this uh, grayscale value to to help us uh, that's it for, for, for now and I will see you in the next video.